Truly, if it can happen to me in 1986 in the middle of the night in a small rural setting like that, it can happen anywhere in 1991. She was a, a regular person from Iowa who made an incredible choice and a very difficult choice to be an advocate. And it wasn't, it wasn't a choice that she had to make. She was uh, this, the spark that uh, began changing the thought patterns and the, the consciousness of people. She was this amazing, amazing um, person in history, but she was also my mom. <laughs> In 1989, three years after an emergency room incident caused her to become the first healthcare worker infected with HIV on the job, Barbara Fassbinder, a registered nurse from Monona, Iowa, publicly shared her story for the first time, but not the last, by courageously communicating her story and sharing a message of compassion and prevention to audiences nationwide. Fassbinder both reduced the stigma associated with HIV and AIDS, as well as spurred nationwide implementation of universal precautions in healthcare a practice that has saved countless lives ever since. Born in 1953 to James and Ethel Herring in Marion, Iowa, Barbara Herring grew up in a loving family with seven siblings. Described as compassionate and caring, with a strong desire to help others, it was only natural that Barbara gravitated toward a career in nursing. After graduating from the University of Iowa College of Nursing in 1975, Barbara Herring married Dave Fassbinder and moved to rural Monona, Iowa, where she began her nursing career and started a family that grew to include three children. In the early 1980s, at the same time, Barbara Fassbinder was working as an emergency room nurse at Prairie du Chien Memorial Hospital in nearby Wisconsin, HIV and AIDS was emerging as a growing American healthcare threat. It's mysterious, it's deadly, and it's baffling medical science. Acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Once thought to affect only promiscuous homosexual males, AIDS is now spreading in epidemic proportions to other segments of the population. If uh, the trends continue as they are, I think we can predict that the acquired immune deficiency syndrome is a, is a highly fatal illness likely to remain with us uh, for the next decade. By 1985, the number of Americans infected with HIV and AIDS was rapidly growing, and over 16,000 Americans had died from this disease. However, because it had a reputation as a disease afflicting homosexuals and drug users, many people believed contracting HIV and AIDS was simply the consequence of bad lifestyle choices. Even in healthcare settings, little attention was paid to the problem. In fact, although the Centers for Disease Control issued official recommendations for the use of universal precautions in 1983, which included the use of barrier methods, such as gloves, to prevent transmission of HIV and AIDS, Hardly any medical facilities follow those recommendations, including the hospital where Barbara Fassbender worked. It's ironic that her work in this small town emergency room caused her early death. My infection happened in um, 1986 while providing emergency care to somebody. Some of the infected patient blood entered some small cuts on my finger. She was the first healthcare worker to uh, be reported to have become infected on the job from blood exposure that was not from a needle stick. Near the time of her diagnosis, Ryan White, a 12-year-old Indiana boy who contracted HIV through a blood transfusion, made national news when his school banned him from attendance. It was this environment of widespread fear and stigma associated with HIV and AIDS, as well as her employer's desire to hide her diagnosis, that led Fastbinder to keep the news a secret from everyone, including her children, for three years. She broke her silence because it it wasn't doing anybody any good, including us. It was hard to keep, keeping secrets is stressful and hard. And just generally. And so she was gonna have to tell people what was going on because she was getting sicker. And then the other reason that was larger, that really was larger than any of us, was that she recognized an opportunity that she had to tell 
her story that would help de destigmatize this disease and get us closer to the way that it should be dealt with, which is we should pretend that every, it's called universal precautions. And that wasn't really a term that was used that often until she started using it and others really kind of caught on. After telling her children and sharing her diagnosis with people locally, Fastbinder received an outpouring of compassion and community support. Telling the kids was a sad experience and yet it was a relief because then they felt that they, could, they knew something was going on and now they could finally ask questions and not be cut off. Emboldened by this experience and her desire to help others, Barbara Fassbinder held a televised press conference at the University of Iowa Hospitals and Clinics on September 26, 1990, where she shared her story to a nationwide audience for the first time in an attempt to lessen the stigma associated with the disease and make a passionate plea for the use of gloves and other universal precautions in medical settings to prevent others from experiencing the same tragedy. Although weakened by her illness, Fassbinder summoned enough energy to communicate her message to receptive audiences nationwide. She frequently spoke to medical groups. I'm a simple nurse, like most of you, but I, I have a story that I'd like to share with you. Appeared on news programs. The public has to uh, have more education um, about transmission of the disease. They need reassurances. And even testified before Congress, beside national experts who supported her position. No matter where she spoke, her message was consistent. If this can happen to me, it can happen to anyone. And gloving up is the best way to save yourself and others, a position officially endorsed by the Centers for Disease Control. Fastbinder's approach had its critics. Kimberly Bergalis, an HIV-infected woman who contracted the disease from her dentist, also testified before Congress at the same time as Fastbinder to advocate for universal testing of healthcare workers. Fastbinder worked tirelessly to oppose this action because, as she wrote in letters to her congressman, it increased stigma for HIV-positive individuals, was an invasion of privacy, and wasn't always effective at stopping the spread of HIV due to the testing time window needed to attain a positive result. Letters flooded into Fastbinder's mailbox, with some offering support and others sharing how her message changed their own professional practices, such as Peggy Chandler, a hospital infection control coordinator, who wrote, I wanted to be sure and share with you how much of an impact your video has made on the healthcare workers at this institution. Additionally, she was so highly respected for her healthcare contributions that she was appointed to the National Commission on AIDS and the National Healthcare Reform Committee, as well as honored by the American Nurses Association and was named the 1991 Iowa Nurse of the Year. However, her health began to deteriorate, and on September 20th, 1994, Barbara Fassbender died at the age of 40. While her life was cut short, Fassbender left a lasting legacy. Thanks to her, gloves and masks are now a standard precaution for healthcare workers, which has saved countless lives ever since. I think her legacy involves uh, the saving of so many lives that didn't have to experience the trauma and upheaval um, and death from a preventable occurrence. Additionally, Fassbinder's message reduced stigma and improved privacy. She, she was for that universal precautions, let's everybody be safe and then not have people subjected to the stigma and the privacy violation of the the universal testing. She became in short order one of those heroes of my lifetime. She was a remarkable, remarkable individual. What I see her legacy and what she comes away with is after all these years, people may not know her name, they may not recognize her face, but they are the beneficiaries of something she did to protect their lives from these infectious agents that can be transmitted via blood. And finally, Barbara Fassbinder deserves to be remembered as a healthcare hero due to the continued relevance and impact of her message on healthcare today and in the foreseeable future. The results came from a stranger in the health department as well as someone from a blood bank. I alone had to figure out how to explain this to my husband. I alone had to figure out how to um, how to tell him that a state health department investigation under our personal private life was to begin the next morning. I alone had to tell him that he would have to be tested for HIV as well and what that would mean.